Whoa. You're a tough manager, Sakiko. It's your ball. Go! Why do I have to be stuck with these guys who don't know how to play ball? That ball's mine. I'll block it! Wow, you moved here all the way from Kitano High School? Yeah. They've got a really strong soccer team, Captain. He'll be our new secret weapon. Yeah, you're right. Their team ranked in the top three in the last national tournament, didn't they? We sure did. It was a pretty good year, and I helped them win every one of those games. Fantastic! That gives us hope for winning the next regional tournament! Yeah, Yuta! Hey! Yes? I'd like for you to meet Kenji Saito. He's gonna be Minami High's new soccer star. Sounds like he's going to be tough competition for you. I think I met you this morning. We're in the same class. I'm Yuta Kazama. I'm looking forward to playing soccer with you. Thanks. I'm Kenji Saito. Pleasure's mine. Hmm. I bet I'm much better than he is. I'll show him. Yuta! Hmm. What is he thinking? Hmm. Kenji. I'm not going to let you to score again. Are you all right? He's really hurt. Somebody get a doctor. What are we gonna do? He busted his uh, knee. Oh, it's bad. Uh, it's really bad. Uh, Yuta! Is that blood? I guess that decides our starting lineup, right, Coach? Yeah. Yoshio Tateishi? Here. Daiji Nakamura? Here. Koji Sakamoto? Here. Kenji Saito. Uh, here. Go Akagi. Here. Makoto Yamaguchi. Here. That's our starting lineup for this year. Congratulations. You men will be the players for the first string this season. Good luck. But no matter which squad you're on, the first string or the second string, what matters most is achieving your own personal best. That's what makes the entire team strong. Understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. And now, about what happened to Utah yesterday. His left ankle is badly injured. The doctors say it'll take at least two months for it to heal. Oh, Good morning, Yuta. What are you doing here so early today? Good morning. We have a scrimmage against Futaba High School this afternoon. You don't have to do that. Let the younger guys take care of cleaning the balls. Well, I don't mind. I really want to do something for the team. And since all I can do is use my hands right now, it's okay with me. 
You know what they say, don't you? The best teams always have the cleanest equipment. <laughs> Here, Kenji. Take this. I just want to do whatever I can to support the team. That's what matters the most. Notes about the key players on the Futaba High School team. We've never lost a single game to Futaba High, so I'm not worried about it at all. Especially with you on our team. We'll be fine. Yuta. They're not even that good. I don't get it. What's wrong with everyone today? They're not coming close to playing their usual game. Let's go, guys. Come on. Go. Right, hey. Pass it. Do us. Steal us. Air down, Pokemon. Guys, come on. What's the matter with him? Kenji seems like his head's not really in the game. What are you guys doing? Come on, get tough. You're missing all of your open shots. Don't quit, don't quit. Oh, no. Look at that. That guy's the captain and he can't even play. What's so funny? Come on, which one of you wimps said that? What's Who do you problem, think you dude? are? You Just chill out, dude, shot? would you say? <laughs> Kenji, stop it! Oh, oh, what are you doing? Stop it, Kenji, stop it! Let <laughs> go! What is going on here? Stop fighting now! Come on! Oh, oh, no! That's it, Eleven's out of the game! It's natural to feel angry and frustrated at times, but you must have control over those feelings. Never let it get the best of you. You're all filled up with so much heated energy. It's to be expected. That's part of growing up. But you need to direct that energy towards something positive. It's your decision whether to channel that energy into something destructive or something positive. But if you make the wrong decision, you'll end up regretting it. That's for sure. We'd like to apologize, sir. <laughs> We're all sorry. <clears throat> Remember, it takes a real man to control his anger and learn to direct it into something positive. It's possible to change a negative situation into a positive by changing your attitude. So with that thought in mind, gentlemen, we'll begin again fresh tomorrow morning. Yes, sir! Changing a negative into a positive. Now that I think of it, it kind of reminds me of Utah. Good morning, everyone. I have some pretty exciting news for you kids. Next week, our school will be welcoming some students all the way from Britain. Really? What for? Because our school has a sister school agreement with theirs. So I hope your English is up to conversational speed. <laughs> OK, I get it. Guess that means no, then, hmm? If I was fluent in English, I wouldn't have to study so hard for our English tests. I suppose you're right. I don't expect you to be fluent in a day, but let's do our best to learn how to say hello to them. Mr. Shimano, do you really know how to speak English well? Yes, of course. I have to. It's necessary to know English these days. As your instructor, it's required for me to speak English well. Okay, coach. We'll see if they understand you. But I, uh... <laughs> All right, class. Settle down. After the English students attend some of your academic classes, we've scheduled a Goodwill soccer game between our two schools. Oh, All right. We'll be rooting for you. You guys are going to win for sure. I know it. Hey, Mr. Shimano, 
Tell us a little bit about these British kids and their school. Sure, good idea. I'll be happy to tell you what I know about them. This group of kids comes from a traditional private school in the middle of England. Most oh. private schools in England are boarding schools where students live full time, participating in both academics and athletics, developing their minds and bodies. It's a long-standing tradition in England, and many of their most famous leaders come from these boarding schools. For example, how many of you have heard of General Wellington? He was a graduate of Eton. The Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Eton. Isn't that right, Coach Shimano? Yes, very impressive, Sakiko. Those are the famous words of General Wellington, who defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. Sakiko, you're smart. And just after World War II, a war memorial was also built. Oxford is a famous university town, and this monument honors the many students who fought and died in the war. Even the names of German students who had studied in England were engraved on this monument. Why did the British people honor the Germans who had been the source of their suffering? That's a good question. Well, it's something to think about, that's for sure. Why do you think a country would honor a people that they had been at war with in such a way? Oh. Hmm? What could they have been thinking? Well, anybody? Yeah, I think the reason why is because they saw those students as fellow people and not just as war enemies. Yes, that's right, exactly. And what about in sports? What do we call that? Isn't there a name for that sort of thing? Hmm. When you're on the field, you can't play a good game with resentment and hatred. Each of you is considered an equal part of the team, just as we are all equal citizens of the planet Earth, which we live in and share. That's the spirit I'm talking about. I know what you mean. You're talking about fair play. That's right. Very good. Even during the very difficult time of war, the British people kept their sense of fairness and treated the German students as fellow human beings who had also suffered. When this sense of fairness disappears, a climate of war may follow. To perpetuate peace, we must maintain this spirit of fairness. Hey, Kenji, you want to play too? No, but thanks. Even during the very difficult time of war, their spirit of fairness remained. Who am I kidding? I may be able to fool others, but I can't fool myself. I know what my problem is, and it's up to me to do something about it. Are you kidding? I can't speak a word of English. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. How do I apologize to him? I'm sure that all of you are aware that the British soccer team is one of the best in the world. Although the team is made up of high school students, it's safe to assume that they'll be better than most teams. So go out there, play with all you've got, and have some fun. <laughs> yeah, but what? What? That's our strategy for today. We don't know anything about this team at all, so all I can say is everyone try for your own personal best. <laughs> like a solid wall. <laughs> and they're really fast. Now's our chance. Offside! No way! A setup with an offside trap. What's an offside trap, Coach Shimano? It's a tactic in which the defense forces an offensive player offside so that they can get control of the ball. Mm. 
In other words, in order to stay onside, there must be at least two opponents, including the goalkeeper, between a player and the opponent's goal line. Otherwise, he's in an offside position. But not if the player gets the ball directly from a goal kick, a corner kick, or a throw in. The offside rule keeps a player from standing around all day waiting at the opponent's goal for a pass. Mm. You see? So an offside trap is when a team's defenders all come forward suddenly. Now, if one of the attacking team's forwards is left behind, then that player is in an offside position, and the other team will get a free kick. An offside trap is a pretty difficult play to pull off. Since soccer was first created in England, they know what they're doing. I think they know the ins and outs of the game pretty well. Come on, over here! Bring it together! Come on, guys! <laughs> That's it! Oh, no! <laughs> Me to make it. He's rooting for me. Even though I'm the one who injured him, he wants me to make it. What a great game. The halftime score is one to one. Here you go. You can do it, Kenji. Here. Thanks, Yuta. All right, guys, get ready. We've got 30 minutes to go. Let's get aggressive now. Yes, yes sir! Kenji. Yes, sir? Good luck. When you get out there, score a goal for Utah. I know that would make him proud of you. Do that much for Utah. Hmm. Now go get him. Okay. <laughs> We're counting on you! Come on, Kenji! Aye, aye, aye. Come on, come on. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. He's quite a good player. Very good indeed. He reminds me of someone else who comes to mind. He's a lot like Shimmy. Shimmy? Mm-hmm. About 80 years ago, there was this amazing athlete. He was a Japanese tennis player who surprised everyone at Wimbledon. And his name was Zenzo Shimizu. That was his chance. At that point, Shimizu could have won the match with a single strong return, but chose instead to keep the ball in play with Tilton. He played the game with true integrity. I believe we learned a lot from him. Shimizu, the small Japanese giant, knew the real meaning of sportsmanship. My father told me all about it when I was just a lad, but you men, you have the opportunity to witness true sportsmanship from this lad right here. Don't forget it, it's all too rare. Chance. Kenji! Huh? Utah. Come on, Utah. 
Junta, help me make this goal. Got a good game, huh? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, mate. Come on. <laughs> it was a good game, all right. A game played in the spirit of fair play. Good game, mate. Hmm. Thanks to you, Utah. To, to apologize. I'm sorry, man. Okay, sure. It's okay, really. Many different winds of change blow over this field. Sometimes the winds of defeat, at other times the winds of endurance. And when we're lucky, even the winds of friendship. But of course we also look to the winds of victory. Me. I'll step up to the plate. 